Hello world and welcome to this, my second video in the series that's looking at the new features of Photolab 8. I'm keeping these short and sharp, that's what I'm calling the series, and picking number two was actually really difficult, but in the end what I've decided is in the local selections there's now a hue selection tool. So let's dive in and look at the hue selection tool in Photolab 8. So here we are in Photolab, and I have got two images that I've brought in to demonstrate the new hue selection in the local adjustments. Really awesome tool. Let's take a look at it. So if I come up to the local adjustment space, you can see in the little e icons here, there's a new one, and that is the hue mask. And just like you might guess, it's going to give us a color picker to start with. And what I'm going to do with this, for this image, in order to get the skin tones to a place that I was happy with, I've had to warm it up quite a bit. It's on like 8,000K. And to my mind, the foliage has gone a little bit yellower than I would like. So I'm going to first of all select the foliage in order to correct that a bit and, and drop, the, drop the temperature a bit on that. So I've just clicked and I've gotten a selection and you can see over here what has appeared now is quite a wide selection and you have to make a selection before you get this interface to show up. But so this is this is probably a little wider than I want. So it's it's going into the oranges quite a bit. So I'm going to back that off. And that right about there is looking pretty good. I might just feather this out a little. So what we can see here is these, this is your main selection, start, starting and or you know the different ends of it, and then this is the feathering of that selection to help blend it into things around. So there's a little bit of feathering going on. You can obviously impact it numerically if you want to really fine tune it. I'm just dragging the handles in this instance because it's giving me a good enough result for what I'm after. So I think that this is a pretty nice selection. With the exception, I don't want her hair to be selected. I think she does have a little bit of color in her hair, if memory serves. So I'm just going to erase out the hair there. Everything else is looking pretty good, I think. So what are we going to do with this now? Well, as soon as I start to move things, I'll get to the, the pink will go away. So I'll just start to, I'm going to move my exposure down a little bit, just because I think that would be nice. I'm going to bump up my contrast a little because I think that will also be nice. I think I'm actually going to drop my blacks a touch too, just in the interest of kind of increasing that contrast, making more separation for the people. And then coming down here, I, I stated that one of the things I really wanted to do was to bring my temperature down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that maybe to about 6,800 or so. Nice. And now I think that, that with these changes, that's looking really good, but saturation is down a bit. So I'm going to maybe just up my vibrancy a bit, just to, just to bring a little bit more life back to, to that greenery. Awesome. So that is done. Let me slide back up here and do my little eyeball icon to give you a before and an after. So really nice change, making a big impact. Now, what else could I select? Could I select, for example, the, well, I should do my plus. I nearly, nearly made a boo-boo. Do my plus to get a new mask. Come over here and do the blues, for example. And maybe on the blues, I also want to, I, I want a bit more richness in them. So I'll drop that exposure just a smidge because that will help the richness. I'll up this contrast a little. And Maybe I'll just give this a little bit of a vibrance boost as well. Don't want to go too far with that, but you know, you get the idea. You can grab those bits. And the last thing that I'll just do, I'll just do really quickly. I'll go plus and I'm going to grab some of these reds. See what we get on a selection for the reds there. It's pretty good. I maybe could be a touch, a touch wider. There we go. I think I'm happy with that. It's a, you might, you know, when you're getting down this narrow, I might be, I'm trying to go quickly for the video, but you might be well served to kind of get down to fine tuning with, with the numerics there. I've got some hair selected, which I'm not super keen on, but again, 
We've got the eraser tool here. I can just come up and get rid of the bits that I want. Makes it really, really flexible, really fast to do. Dare I say it, better than AI. <laughs> Sorry, open a can of worms there. I did that once last year. I dared to say that I thought the tools in here could compete with AI. Just being a troublemaker. Okay, now what am I on about? Oh, that's the reds. Yeah, yeah, cool. So again, what am I going to do with this? I am going to increase the contrast. Boom, 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 boom. Maybe about there. Maybe a touch more. And I'm going to give it some saturation and some vibrance because it's it's quite dull. Uh, the thing is, the thing is, I don't want to make these reds be too poppy. So I'm just trying to be a little bit, a uh, little bit. Want to make a difference without making it too crazy. Um, so that's probably good for there. So if I off that, it goes just a bit duller on that. Gets just a little bit richer. Yeah, I think I might actually down that exposure a touch too. Cool. So we can call that good enough for now for argument's sake. We've done three different masks. We've done some brush to erase. Now the other image that I've brought in here, I'll just super quickly show you this. Sometimes on portraits, this is not an extreme example. It's just someone for whom I had asked permission to use their image on YouTube and they had given permission. So I will use it in that instance. Something that happens sometimes is you end up with some extra redness through around the nose or the cheeks or whatnot that you just want to calm down a little. You want to bring it a little bit more in line with the, with the rest of the face. And just to show you kind of what that might look like, again, this isn't an extreme example. I've grabbed the Hue tool, I've clicked on the face, and wow, because this isn't so different, it's selected pretty much everything. But I can I can cheat this a little bit for uh, demonstration purposes. If I just grab this whole thing, again, you can slide this whole thing around, right? Uh, so I've got this little sliver and I can slide it around. And if I just slide it around more towards my reds, it's going to exclude, exclude until there's just the reddest bits of the face still, still there. And of course, when you're doing this kind of work, you really don't want to mess with the lips because it looks really funny if you do a hue shift on lips most of the time. Um, so I'm going to remove the lips from that selection. And when I'm talking about a hue shift, what I'm talking about is that I might take my reds more towards oranges up this way in order to match in with the rest of them. And I just do that by grabbing this wee little handle and bringing that up. And in this instance, you probably could just use the global channel, but I've just had better luck by selecting the red here and, and going from there. So, you know, your mileage may vary. Give it a try. See what you think. And that, my friends, is the new Hue Selection tool in Photolab 8, an absolutely wonderful addition that no doubt will be super handy through the photo editing process. So remember, this is part of a series. I've got a number of videos out showing the new features of Photolab 8. Please feel free to check them out. Also, I've got links in the description. They are affiliate links. I do appreciate your support. So if you're thinking about trying or buying, if you click those links, very much appreciate it. And with that, I'll say thanks so much for watching. An absolute pleasure. And I'll talk again soon. Bye-bye.